Well, thank you, Rachel. Uh, Rachel has just started uh, the recording of today's webinar. Um, welcome to those who have straight away joined. We, uh, we have a maximum capacity of registrations today. So as we always do, we're just gonna wait a couple of minutes to let everyone who's registered uh, to join in. Uh, we've got a little counter on our screen and I can see already that it's racing up with participants. So that's uh, fantastic. As always, uh, when our friend John Hembrow from Down Under Alley announces that he's going to do a webinar, we have we have always have maximum registration. So you must be doing something right, John. That's a um, <laughs> so um, while we're waiting, uh, in the screen there, you'll see we've got uh, Richard Cheshire, uh, who with his um, wife, Freddie, uh, is uh, currently situated over on his yacht in Umea. Uh, and we've got Sally Peppermans from Tourism Caledonia joining in today, which is fantastic. So welcome to John, Richard and Sally. And just while we're waiting, I'm just going to jump across to the next slide and we'll just do what we do each time. This, believe it or not, is our 24th webinar uh, since we started in uh, April last year. Uh, if you want to go back and view any of the multi hole solutions slash the Yacht Sales Co webinars, you can by going to the YouTube channel, the multi hole solutions YouTube channel, where there's a playlist with all of the previous webinars to be. Uh, that you can go back and watch in your spare time. Our next webinar uh, will be in one month's time on the 27th of May. And that's with Sue Ellen Tompkins, who did a webinar for us uh, late last year, which was fantastic. Uh, Sue Ellen brings a very uh, realistic view of, uh, of cruising sailing uh, to, to everyone. And we, the, the webinar this time, so Ellen was a late starter with sailing. So she's like a mature age sailor. She started learning to sail at a later age. And so this next webinar is all about Sue Ellen having a chat about how she adapted to sailing uh, as a mature age entrant and how she's then built up confidence from everything from sailing at night time to managing the boat and all the electronics and the navigation equipment. And so that'll be a very, very good webinar to tune into in one month's time. And we click over the page there, as we do each week. Um, if you want to ask questions throughout this webinar today, you're quite welcome to do so. You have a Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. If you type your question, we will then either interrupt and ask the question if it's, uh, if it's definitely rele relevant to the uh, point that we're making in the presentation at that time, or we'll hold it over to a Q&A session at the end. So feel free to ask your questions. Uh, don't be offended if we don't answer you straight away, but uh, we will endeavor to cover all of the questions at the end. The last time we did a, a webinar with John, uh, I think it went for about an hour and 45 minutes. Now, the reason we allow that to happen is because we're not, we're not bound by the restrictions of having another program coming up afterwards. And, our objective here is just to gather the information and, and keep it and capture it as a resource that we can then put on YouTube and people can go back to and refer to. So there won't be any time limits on today's webinar. We're going to just let it flow. Uh, if you do need to depart or if you do need to sign off and because you've got other things to do, don't worry, you can come back and watch it on the YouTube channel at a later date. So uh, it's just, we wanted to make that point clear at the start that we're just gonna let this presentation flow today. Uh, myself, I'm Greg Boller. I'm the New York Sales Manager with uh, multi Health Solutions. And in the background who um, producing today's presentation is Rachel, who has, uh, we've worked together on these webinars from the beginning and uh, we look forward to today's webinar. So now we're just gonna flick over the slide and I'm going to hand over to John and I'm going to slide into the background. Um, and I wish you all luck with today's presentation. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, Rachel, and good afternoon to everyone tuning in. Um, it's lovely to be here again, uh, sharing what we know about uh, New Caledonia and uh, our offshore cruising. For those who haven't um, met us before or heard of us before, just a little quick intro for you. 
Um, my wife and I, Leanne, have been full, 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 full time liverboard cruisers for the past 12 years. We've got about 50,000 nautical miles passed under our keels on both monohulls and multi hulls. We've done the return voyage from Australia, New Caledonia, Vanuatu, and then down to New Zealand the first time in 2009. We then uh, did an east to west Pacific crossing for four years, 2010 to 14, from uh, uh, Southern California down through Central um, America, Panama, and across the Pacific, ultimately ending up in Fiji, where we spent a couple of years. Um, and then we returned back into Australia here in 2015 and um, purchased this cat catamaran song lines that uh, was the um, the vessel that we began the down under rallies with and uh, we've done Australia to Fiji return uh, five times every year except for of course last year uh, thanks to the COVID changes. So we've uh, we've crossed that piece of water uh, quite a lot and spent a lot of time in New Caledonia. Um, New Caledonia was the catalyst for us wanting to cross the Pacific. We arrived there in 2009 um, and it was our first overseas port. Um, we spent three months there and it was so extraordinary that we figured that if this is what the Pacific's got on offer, um, let's go and see it all. So subsequently, we, we decided we wanted to see as much of the Pacific as we can. And we constantly found ourselves drawing comparisons everywhere we went to New Caledonia. And um, we really found that um, yeah, as an all round cruising destination, there was not a lot that uh, even came close to what New Caledonia had to offer. And we hope we can demonstrate that to you during the course of today's webinar. So <clears throat> I've recently um, have become, I, I've, um, I've been introduced uh, in the promos of this webinar as a New Caledonia expert. And uh, my dad once told me that an expert uh, is, a, is a has been and a drip under pressure. So, um, as an expert, I wasn't, I'm not too sure that I wanted to be thought of as an expert, but I've been given the accreditation from New Caledonia Tourism uh, as an expert level one as a result of some courses I've done. So I guess I, I have got some knowledge um, of, of, of a lot of different aspects of New Caledonia, not just the cruising aspect of it. Um, we're very disappointed not to be able to be going to New Caledonia again this year. Um, it was a huge disappointment last year with a, with a number of vessels um, that had registered and we were all ready to head off. I think we had 48 in total and uh, ultimately we weren't able to go. Uh, and then again, this year, it, it became evident that we wouldn't be able to go this year again. And there was an enormous amount of uh, interest in some sort of a, a, a rally that saw us going somewhere together. Uh, and it was suggested that maybe we go up the Queensland coast or we go down to Tasmania or we go here or there. But I really wanted to do something that incorporated some overnight passages and some unique destinations. Anyway, we've come up with this Beyond the Barrier Rally. So if you are looking for an adventure this year and you want to get out into the blue and uh, experience something different, um, we've got this going. We've sold out the June Rally, but there are some spaces available on the August one. So if you're interested in a cruise, you can see the route there leaving Bundaberg out into the Coral Sea Islands and Cays, a couple of hundred nautical miles offshore. Um, it's, it'll be a, a, a true adventure, a blue water adventure, and we'll give you some uh, ocean sailing uh, experiences as well. Um, in regard to the Southwest Pacific, we produce this magazine each year and we've just published the 2021 edition of it. And it's got some great information in there about not just New Caledonia, but Vanuatu, Fiji, as well as some, some really great stories that we've been able to have written by international cruisers that have been cruising extensively in Australia during COVID. Um, so there's some good reads in there and some good information. It's free to download. You can scan the QR code there if you'd like to, or go to our website and uh, download the magazine free or just view it on our website free. So we invite you to do that and hope you find that of uh, interest. All right, let's get on to New Caledonia. And just before we go, I'm gonna play a few videos on and off throughout the presentation to give my voice a rest, to give you a rest from listening to me and just to show something a bit different. So. The first one is one that we've made up. It's just what we like to call New Caledonia, something for everyone. Thank you. 
So they're all our own uh, images and videos and, and uh, stories there from many years of going backwards and forwards. And, and as we say, something for everyone, you can see that there's everything from just remote tropical island paradises with sandy beaches and palm trees through to um, some really entertaining nightclubs and, uh, and uh, uh, nightlife to enjoy. So joining us today, um, Greg did introduce earlier, but we've got Sally from um, New Caledonia Tourism, who've been a great supporter of ours over the last couple of years and helped us uh, really make um, the experiences our participants have had in New Caledonia that much more enjoyable. Sally's um, from New Zealand and she's a resident of New Caledonia, as I understand it, that's found herself displaced um, as a result of COVID. I'll let you tell that story quickly, Sally, welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, everyone. Uh, and bonjour or uh, bonsoir. Uh, so, yes, thank you so much for um, um, letting me um, showcasing my beautiful country. Uh, as you can hear from my French accent, I'm French. Uh, I'm, I was um, born and raised in France, in Bordeaux, actually. And I decided to move to, from France to uh, New Caledonia in 2002. And I spent 13 years in New Caledonia before I decided to move to beautiful New Zealand uh, in order to promote as a destination uh, to New Zealanders uh, to showcase uh, New Caledonia as another option for their holiday destination so yes um, yeah, here we are and your family's in in uh, new caledonia and you're in new zealand i believe is that right actually my husband is presently in new caledonia he uh, works as a doctor at the emergency hospital in numia so yes otherwise the rest of my family is um in uh france lovely all right well thank you for joining us i'm looking forward to uh my pleasure you share your experiences and your knowledge with everyone yes. today. Um, we've also got a gentleman here by the name of Richard Cheshire, and many of you may know him as the author of the Rocket Guides to New Caledonia. He's he's far more than a um, sorry, that's amateur hour. I forgot to turn my phone off. I apologise. Um, he's much more than an author of a cruising guide, um, and I've come to think of him as my friend over the years long before we were actually cruising and I was sitting in my office dreaming about all the things we were going to do, I came across something that I then since have learned was, was the uh, work of Richard Cheshire called Thread of Awareness in Chaos. And uh, it was a story that he was sharing about uh, his adventures as a cruiser and, and, and all of the things he was experiencing and, and some of the philosophies of, of life that he wanted to share with everyone. And it became a really interesting read. Um, it also included the log of the Moira, which is Richard's vessel that he and Freddie have been living on um, for I think 45 odd years now um, in the Southwest Pacific or in this Pacific Ocean. Um, and for 20 of those years in New Caledonia. Um, Richard's uh, PhD, as you can see on the left-hand side there, um, He's very accomplished and is very modest. He hasn't told me any of these things, by the way. I started to do a little bit of research. And after having known him for some 10 years, I only discovered all these things very recently. So uh, welcome, Richard. It's a privilege to have you here with us. And um, would you like to say hello to everyone? Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you very much, John. Uh, it's great to be here and, and I'm totally impressed by the organization that uh, has been put into this web webinar. Um, seems to be going really well. I'm, I'm actually down in uh, the Bay de Prony in the southwest tip of Grand Terre on the Moira. And it's just incredible that we can do su stuff like this from such remote lo locations. And that's one good thing about cruising here in Numea. Um, and that is that you're connected all the time, no matter where you are cruising around. And uh, it's got good 4G. Uh, we don't have 5G here yet, but it's coming. And uh, that's that's really a nice thing to be able to share experiences and, and places to go and see here in New Caledonia with a medium like this. Yes, it's incredible that we can do this, isn't it? And, and sit there and you're sitting on your boat there and that. Look, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Um, I'm sure that uh, you're going to share some more of your, your knowledge and your stories with us as we go through. Um, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll move on through there now. So what we've done is we wanted to give you a little bit of a virtual cruise um, in New Caledonia as part of our presentation. And Richard, 
<clears throat> as we said, is the author of the Rocket Guides to New Caledonia. And he's created this really unique little presentation here. He's done two of them, in fact. This first one is uh, just a little introduction to um, cruising in New Caledonia, as well as a three-day adventure, <clears throat> uh, cruising quite close to Numea and around. It'd be a great little voyage to do if you had friends coming in to visit you for a week and you didn't want to go too far. Uh, as you'll see, there's lots to see and do. So let's just run this video and, uh, and enjoy Richard's introduction to New Caledonia. Hi, I'm Richard Cheshire, and this is my wife, Freddie. We've lived and cruised the South Pacific aboard the Moira, our 44-foot cutter, since 1975. Of all the island countries we've visited, New Caledonia is by far our favorite. We love cruising here. And because we want other cruisers to enjoy New Caledonia as much as we do, we created the Rocket Cruising Guide to New Caledonia. Why is New Caledonia the best cruising ground in the Pacific? Beautiful, vibrant coral reefs protected by marine reserves. Enjoying white sand beaches, often without anyone else around. Walking in wilderness and cooling off in crystal clear pools under waterfalls safely spending the night in 220 good anchorages, easy navigation in protected waters with excellent navigation aids, cultural diversity and festivals, and very important, New Caledonia's location because cruisers have to sail to New Caledonia to enjoy it. It's surprisingly easy if you do it correctly. Fiji, New Zealand, and Australia or just a seven day sail. Vanuatu is only an overnight hop. We sailed the Tonga in eight days. This meant we had a really good idea of what the winds would be so we could pick a nice weather window for our trips. Consequently, we enjoyed 40 years of delightful annual migrations in the South Pacific. You really have to love New Caledonia for being right where it is. Port Moselle Marina, where you clear in when you arrive, is a modern full service marina smack dab in downtown Numea. The village market's right next to the marina. You need fuel, marine supplies, something from the pharmacy, Wi-Fi, internet, French bread or pastries, whatever you want, whatever you need, you can probably walk over from the marina and get it. Once you've cleared in, rested, done the laundry, resupplied with goodies, it's time to escape into the world's largest coral reef lagoon and discover the real reason New Caledonia is the greatest cruising grounds in the South Pacific. You'll discover mind-boggling beautiful beaches, coral reefs, clear water, great surfing, kite surfing, wind surfing, less than an hour's sail from Numea. Let me show you a quick three-day virtual cruise so you get an idea of why I really love cruising in New Caledonia. We sail out the entrance to Nomia Harbor and go wing on wing or drifter or spinnaker eight nautical miles west and then come up under the lee of Ilo Signal and tie up to a park mooring. Step out of your dinghy onto the park wharf, walk down the white sand beach, follow the marked trails to the historic 1860 lighthouse that gives Ilo Signal its name. Enjoy watching the sea eagle. Go for a snorkel and take photos of the fish and corals, and maybe even a sea turtle or two. Of all the island countries in the South Pacific, New Caledonia is the only country that really seriously is protecting the coral reefs and lagoon islands. Ilo Signal is one of 10 marine nature reserves where you can visit, but not damage or even disturb the marine or terrestrial life. After lunch, Sail 4.4 nautical miles downwind to Ilo Mabo and drop the anchor in five meters of water over white sand. Just off a shallow pass through the fringing reef for easy access by dinghy to the lovely white sand beach. If you feel like going for a snorkel, head up to the eastern point of the fringing reef and have an enjoyable day. Finally, to spend the night, to sail 1.8 nautical miles around Mabo and anchor in five meters of white sand, just 150 meters behind Ilo Mabe 
cooling. It is protected from all winds except from the north and west and is one of the best night anchorages in this part of the lagoon. The beach is perfect for an evening picnic or an early morning stroll. The prototype for a South Pacific de desert island just inside the barrier reef, surrounded by lush coral reefs. The fringing reef surrounding the Bay Cohen has a thriving community of corals and fish. The corals are extremely fragile and the best coral areas are so shallow, you need to be very careful not to break the living coral with your flippers or other parts of your anatomy. It not only damages the coral, but coral cuts can be extremely dangerous if not treated quickly. See more details on that in the Rocket Guides section on health. So day one, two or three hours, easy sailing in protected lagoon waters from downtown Noumea. Three, tropical lagoon islands, clear turquoise water, white sand beaches, vibrant reefs, fresh air. How great is that? You probably want to stay at Bay Cohen for a day of fun on the beach and snorkeling over the reefs. And then after a good night's sleep, set off early the next day to sail five nautical miles to Dumbia Pass. An anchor in the sand, never in the coral, just behind the barrier reef. This is one of the most popular surf and dive spots in New Caledonia. Divers love doing drift dives through the pass and exploring the wreck of the Humboldt, sunk in 22 meters of water in 1968 as an artificial reef. After a snorkel expedition on the reefs, it's four nautical miles to one of the 20 park moorings behind Ilo Larigné Nature Reserve. Ding in shore, and you can beach walk right around the island in 20 minutes, depending on how long you spend taking photos, basking in the sun, relaxing in the shallow water. There's some lovely reefs, perfect for snorkeling, just a short dinghy ride from the park mooring. From Ila Larigné, it's five nautical miles to anchor in five to six meters of white sand in the lee of Ilat Goyland and the massive, beautiful sand shoals that surround it. It's a popular overnight anchorage here because like Ilo Mbebeke Cohen, you can find a spot to anchor protected from winds from any direction. And yeah, it's really pretty. The protected sand flats make Ilo Goyland one of the best wind and kite surfing areas in New Caledonia. From the 1st of November until the 30th of March, nobody can go within 300 meters of the island because it's a sanctuary for a rare migratory seabird that nests there. The next morning is just nine nautical miles to pick up a park mooring in the lee of the absolutely incredible Ilo Amade Sustainable Development Management Area. The park moorings prevent damage to the coral and seagrass beds Amade is one of eight sustainable development management areas in New Caledonia with limited tourism development, but full protection of the marine life and the seabirds. The fish and sea turtles are so used to boats and people that you can swim right up to them. This is a photographer's dream, both underwater and on the island. Mary D operates a day excursion from Nomea, including a gourmet, seriously good, barbecue lunch, and Polynesian dancing, plus a demonstration of pareo tying, coconut creek climbing, and a visit to the top of the magnificent lighthouse. Plus, there's some pretty serious beaching for everyone. Amade is a don't miss it adventure in New Caledonia. In the afternoon, it's a 10 nautical mile broad reach to Ilomet, Sustainable Development Management Area, and another park mooring. Ilomet has some of the finest snorkeling in the New Caledonia Lagoon, with shoals of fish and lots of vibrant living corals right next to the park moorings. New Caledonia's marine parks and reserves are one of the very few places in the Pacific where you can see coral reefs as they were 60 years ago. You can walk all the way around the island on the white sand beach with its extensive shallow sand flats. 
the Escapade Resort on Ilomet has a fine restaurant, bar, and swimming pool, often with entertainment in the evening. The next morning, you can be back in Numea after a broad reach of just three miles. There just isn't any other island country in the whole South Pacific where you can enjoy anything like this kind of easy cruising and spending up close time with amazing sea creatures thriving in the beauty of their coral wonderland. Not and be back in time for fresh croissants and coffee with your friends at the Boudamond restaurant at Port Moselle Marina. When you're not cruising the lagoon, there are lots of things to do in and around Numea. Let's have a quick look at the Rocket Travel Guide to New Caledonia to see some of the restaurants, for example, in Numea, where they're located and what kinds of foods that they have. There's a lot of really great restaurants in Numea. French are very, very particular about their food. Some of the restaurants even brew their own beer. There's a casino, beaches, the Aquarium de Numea, St. Joseph Cathedral, the Cultural Center, which is really quite an amazing place. various museums, parks to go walking, and if you want to go further afield to enjoy parks, you can rent a car, drive 20 minutes into the mountains, and enjoy the Dumbia River, the northern branch absolutely beautiful, walking through the mountainous trails, enjoying the sparkling crystal clear water. This is the southern branch. Really amazing. Lots of places you can go for a swim, and it winds up at the dam. That's just a small sample of one cruising itinerary within an hour or two cruising from Numea. When you set off to cruise the rest of New Caledonia, you'll find a treasure trove of adventures. Do an unforgettable 10-day cruise down through the Great Southern Lagoon to the Isle of Pines. Then loop back via the wilderness anchorages on the southeast tip of Grand Terre. Or take a 15-day cruise to the Loyalty Islands and come back to Numea via the eastern and southern coast of Grand Terre. To plan the perfect cruise for you and your crew, order the Rocket Cruising Guide to New Caledonia. The website address is in a link in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching this video. Come to New Caledonia as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, good <It's> fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Richard, uh, 81 years old. One could only hope that's uh, extraordinary. Well done, mate. I hope everyone else enjoyed it. I've watched it about five times and I still get goosebumps each time I watch it. Sally, what do you think? I, I'm blown away. It's just magnificent. Um, if you're looking for a job, uh, Richard, I'm hiring you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And I'm um, glad you enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to the rest of this magnificent presentation. Well, and we've got another one of Richard's great little virtual tours coming up later on. So stick around for that one. It's uh, it's quite extraordinary when we get down into that southern lagoon and those are islands down there. Alrighty, so if we've decided, right, oh, that's us, we're going to New Caledonia. Um, something that people often ask is, do we need to get a visa before we leave? Um, and the answer is no, provided you don't want to stay any longer than 90 days. Um, you will be granted a 90 day visa on arrival you'll be required to exit the country. Oh, sorry, and I am speaking here specifically about Australian and New Zealand residents. Um, this does vary from uh, other countries. If we've got international viewers, you might wanna just check your qualification. So I am speaking specifically here about Australian and New Caledonian visa holders. So you'll be required to exit the country within 90 days of your arrival. You can return at any time and use the unperiod, unused period of that first 90 days. So what that means is you might 
be there for 30 days, sail off to Vanuatu for, a, for a 30 days, and you can come back and spend another 60 days in New Caledonia. However, if you spent your full 90 days in New Caledonia and then went off to Vanuatu, um, you wouldn't be able to return to New Caledonia until a further 90 days have expired. So you need to be out of the country for 90 days after you've been in the country for 90 days. I hope that's not too confusing, but essentially what it means is that you can stay in the country for up to 180 days in any 365 day period, but not consecutively. Now we have had some people that have left um, New Caledonia and, and been there for 85 days and thought, oh, we're gonna sneak out and go to uh, Vanuatu and clear in there and stay there for a couple of weeks and come back and get our visas reset, and get another 90 days. Some have been lucky enough to uh, have that happen, but very many have not been. And they've been told, well, that's lovely, welcome. When you can only stay another five days, your visa's going to run out. So just be aware that um, there are those, those restrictions. If you were to take the boat over and be there for a, a couple of weeks and fly home, the, the, the visa will stop and you'll only have used up your 10 days or 14 days or whatever it is, and you'll be able to come back and use up the rest. But a maximum of 90 days in any 180 days. Make sure your passport's got more than six months before it expires. And as of January 29, you must have proof of medical cover and travel insurance. Um, and this is a requirement. It's not um, something that is going to look the other way if you haven't got it. Um, you'll need to have travel insurance with proof of uh, repatriation and medical cover um, to, to be able to be granted a visa um, when you arrive. There are one way letters that are required if you've got crew arriving in to visit you on the boat and they're not flying back out. So if they've arrived on a one-way ticket, we're going to have to, or you're going to have to get a, a letter from the immigration department in New Caledonia saying they're allowed to arrive in New Caledonia on a one-way ticket. We give you all of this information. It's far too much to explain here and now, but it, it is worth knowing that these things are little idiosyncrasies that you'll need to be aware of. And it's not unique to New Caledonia, by the way. Um, Vanuatu, Fiji, all these places are, are very much the same in regard to this one-way letter thing. Um, and the next important thing to know is that vessels can stay for a maximum of one year in any three-year period without having been imported. So that means that, that you can go to New Caledonia for four months this year and four months next year and four months the year after, and you'll be able to do that every year for as long as you like. But if you happen to go to New Caledonia for six months this year, and six months next year, then you won't be able to go the third year because you've spent 12 months, one year in any three year period. So it's very important to understand that and they are right onto it. Um, we, because we've visited so often and we've spent a lot of time there over the years, we have um, got to a situation where we almost ran out of our three year period. Um, so just, just be aware that you can't just go there indefinitely. Um, and, and sorry to interrupt, John, if it was the would be is it 7.5 percent or thereabouts or uh, look it, it, there's a lot of things in respect to that that'll be determined um whether it's duty and tax and and so yes. forth. we couldn't comment great at this point okay um all righty so that's visas so where do we leave if we're going from Australia? Look, we've always left from the Gold Coast. Um, we haven't always left from the Gold Coast. We now choose to leave from the Gold Coast. We've had a couple of trips that weren't quite so uh enjoyable when we've left from further south for various reasons. But our basic reason for saying the Gold Coast is that we get periods of westerly quadrant winds, which are often experienced in southeast Queensland during May and June. And they allow us to clear the coast sooner and provide us with calmer seas for the commencement of the voyage. Um, if we do need to sail south, if that is uh, prudent to get some east southeasting in for the latter part of the voyage in case the trade winds come around on us unexpectedly, um, then we can do so easily with the current. The important thing to understand is that uh, when we're leaving from ports further south, we've got that east coast current to get across, and that can have a significant impact on the speed of the voyage as you're trying to depart um, the coast. Whereas by leaving from the Gold Coast and heading south with the current down to the latitude of Coffs Harbour to say, but perhaps a couple of hundred miles offshore, uh, we've, we've achieved the same goal of having that, 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 that better angle. Um, and of course, if we don't need to, and we've got the right forecast, we can avoid doing that and sail closer to a run wind. Look, the other thing about waiting in Coffs Harbour for a suitable weather window, um, it means being an open roasted roll the anchorage, unless you're lucky enough to be able to get into the marina, which uh, it can be difficult to get a casual berth in. 
Um, and there, there are fewer, fewer marine services there if you need something replaced or repaired at last minute. So for various reasons, we feel that the departing from Southeast Queensland, AKA the Gold Coast is, is the best option. How far is it? So 780 nautical miles from Southport to Numea if you were to sail the rum line. How long is it going to take? Mm. So that's answered with how fast do you go? And I won't read all these out, you can read them, but depending on the speed of your boat, it's gonna take somewhere between six and a half days to as fast as four days, or perhaps even quicker if you're a faster boat. But um, so yeah, look, if you allowed seven days maximum on some of your, your more you know, heavier, uh, slower monohulls up to your fast performance cruising catamarans, you know, you could be there in as little as three and a half or four days. Arrival formalities, and this is just an overview. Um, one of the joys of New Caledonia is it's free to check in. There's no fees for customs, there's no fees for biosecurity, there's no fees for anybody. Um, it's all free. So you arrive at Port Mazel Marina, and by the way, New Mia is the only port of entry into New Caledonia. You cannot arrive in the country from overseas in any other location, unless you have you're part of an organised event such as the ones we run into the Loyalty Islands where we fly the officials in to meet the boats and get you a full inward clearance. But Numea is the only port of entry. Um, once you're there, all of the customs and biosecurity typically takes place at the marina. And then once they've uh, the biosecurity have been and, and customs, you then do a walk to the immigration office from the marina about 25 minutes or so and uh, you'll do your immigration, get your visa, and um, you'll be back in the boat. Um, just be aware that uh, typically these immigration office will close around about 11, 11.30 in the morning, and they won't reopen in the afternoon. They use the afternoon time to process all of their paperwork. So you'll need to be there in the morning on most days, otherwise you'll find yourself uh, in trouble doesn't really matter unless it's a Friday. Often people tend, seem to arrive at Friday and they get there at midday and they realize they can't do anything until Monday and they get quite frustrated because it's not eight in the afternoon. So just be aware of that. Uh, cost for marina berths in our experience, um, around about 75% of the cost of those in Australia. There is 240 volt power, but the different shore pug, uh, power configuration is there. So it's a European style shore power plug. So you'll need to uh, have made those arrangements before you leave, or if you can abla the French <laughs> and you can get someone to understand what it is you're wanting them to do, you might be able to get your plug top changed over. Um, there's water available on the dock and many say it's potable water. Uh, others have had experiences where they say it's not quite so potable. So um, you'll leave that up to your discretion. We always filter our water when we're taking it from the dock anywhere we go um, that we're not familiar with. So just give some consideration to taking some filters with you if you're looking to take dock water on. We talked about how long the boat can stay. There's free Wi-Fi available at the marina for marina guests. And uh, there's a uh, welcome complimentary beer or wine from the Bout de Monde right there at the marina. So that has been the case in previous years. I hope it continues, it's lovely. You go and check in the marina and they give you a couple of free passes to go and get a free beer, which is just a wonderful way to start your adventure. So that's a arrival formalities. Um, when we're, there's not too many formalities in New Caledonia, but this is one that people perhaps aren't always aware of and it's very important. Um, I'll let Sally say, pronounce this. I always say la coutume, but I'm not sure that I've got that right. Sally, how do we say this? La coutume, you did it well. <laughs> That'll be the first time. <laughs> So this is a traditional gesture. Um, it's important to understand that, especially when we're cruising in the islands in the south and the east and the, and, and the loyalties in these places, that these islands are the homes of these people. And they actually do also have the rights to the water areas um, in front of their homes. And it is their backyard. They're often living out of these lagoons. They're, they're fishing there, they're gathering uh, food. Um, and it is a resource for them that is very important. Um, if you imagine that someone just came and set up in your backyard, in your front yard with their RV, and uh, then sort of wanted to plug their, their power into your shore power and do all those things into your house and, and just live in your front yard for a few weeks without your permission, I, I imagine you probably wouldn't be too excited about it. Well, essentially that's what we do in our yachts. We just rock up in our yachts and drop our anchor and start living in people's front yards for a few weeks. And it's, uh, 
we need to make sure that we're welcome and we need to make sure that it's okay because there are some times when these guys close these areas to allow them to rejuvenate. Um, they stop fishing there themselves. They do all sorts of things to, to make it sustainable for them. And we go in there without knowing what's going on and we become very much um, um, unwelcome. It's as simple as going ashore and, and, and giving this, making this traditional gesture of Lakatun with the chief or the appointed um, recipient within the village. And you can do many things. You're welcome to, to give gifts of all kinds of, of different things that will be very welcome. But you, what you must do is follow the traditional gesture, which is a thousand francs, equivalent to about 10, 10 oh, sorry, 12, 13 Australian dollars, and some material for the ladies or the gentlemen to make walls in there. In, uh, they, they, they use this material for all sorts of things. They, they line the walls of their traditional um, homes with them. They use them for clothing. Um, they make mats out of them. They do all sorts of things. So this material, you'll take a two meter by two meter um, piece of that material as a minimum. Uh, that's right, Sally, is it two meter by two meters? Yes, that can vary, but yes, that's the traditional uh, traditional um, uh, measurements. Yes, that's right. Yes. So we 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 attend. We we offer this material, as you can see the folks doing up there in the photograph, and uh, the thousand francs. And in return, you're going to to receive uh, a ceremony of sorts, and that will depend largely on where you are. We've had some ceremonies that have gone on for an hour, and we couldn't understand a word of what was being said because it was all in French. And it was very traditional, um, which we enjoyed nonetheless. And we've had some people that just said, oh, thank you, uh, off you go. So, you know, don't you have any expectation of what you're going to get back? It's not about you, it's about them. And um, it's very important that you make this gesture. You will also find that if they don't want you there, they'll tell you now, um, look, we don't want you here. We've, our area is closed. We're, we're doing this, we're doing that. We've had a death. Um, in the in in within the community, and we're in mourning. Um, there's all sorts of things that go on that are much different than than we are used to. So, yeah, look, just just make the effort and do this. Your experience will be that much better for it, and everyone that comes after you will also have a much better experience. Have you got anything on that, Richard? Or no, I think you've you've covered it very well. Okay. Alrighty, moving on. Um, our must-have cruising guide. So Richard uh, demonstrated his guides earlier. If you're going to go to New Caledonia, this is just a part of your cruising expenditure. And honestly, if you don't have them, you're doing yourself an injustice. Um, you can sail past places, you'll sail past places, not even knowing what exists there, waterfalls and wonderful hikes and, and village ruins and all sorts of things. And you will have no idea that you've just sailed past something that was an extraordinary experience. By having these guides on board, you can make informed decisions about what you are going to see and what you're not going to see. You can't see it all unless you're going to be there like Richard for 20 odd years. And everyone's got a different, most, you know, some people don't want to see anything but sandy beaches and palm trees. And so therefore you've got a lot of choices, but other people want to experience different things. They want to be able to go ashore and do a hike. They want to be able to dive on the pinnacle. They want to be able to do different things. And the guides are going to make sure that you've got, um, you know, you're fully informed as to what's available for you, as well as the safety of the anchorages from a weather perspective. Um, it's, it's just an invaluable resource and you can buy it through us if you wish to and get a 10% discount for everybody that uh, visits our website and would like to buy the rocket cruising guides, you can get a 10% discount. If you happen to join one of our rallies, um, you get a 20% discount, but there's, uh, we have to actually install the guides for you. So let's just work on a 10% discount now. If you'd like to get these guides, you can get them from our website. Alrighty, so we're going to have Sally chat with us now. And so while she gets her, her thoughts together, I'm just going to play this quick little video to introduce Sally um, yes. and, and New Caledonia. So here we go. Here we go. Going well, going well. <laughs> Thank you. 
Why do you go, Sally? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Very nice introduction, I think. Yes, indeed. Um, yes, so, um, well, uh, I'm not going to focus too much on the lagoon because I think we uh, covered up already with uh, Richard and John. Um, well done. It was amazing to learn all about um, the lagoon in New Caledonia, which is listed on UNESCO World Heritage, so it means something. So I think you did a great job on that. So I'm going to uh, more focus today on the, the nature, the landscape of New Caledonia, as well as its culture. We uh, already had uh, a couple of insights, but I think we can go a little bit uh, further. But if you go to the next slide, uh, one of the questions I always have is uh, what the weather like, what the weather in New Caledonia. And I would say we have one of the best in the world because it's only subtropical. It's not a tropical destination. Uh, so it's never too hot and it's never too cold. We are very lucky to have two big seasons, a hot and humid, which normally start at Christmas, start to rain at Christmas time uh, until um, March, April. And then you have a cool season and a dry season. Um, yeah, a little bit of a winter-ish because the average temperature by day in July and August will be 25 degrees. So uh, very moderate, it's never too cold, never too hot. So great weather in New Cal. So if we move to the next slide, uh, this is New Caledonia. So how to get around. A lot of people don't realize how big is a country. And actually this big French baguette, you can see you know, the shape of it. Uh, it's a French stick. Uh, it's uh, is 450 kilometers long. So um, it's easy to rent a car, whether you arrive at La Tontuta airport, which is in the south of the country, or when you arrive uh, by boat in Numea. So yes, that's the south. So easy to rent a car. And yes, we do drive on the right hand side of the road, but it's very easy to get around. We have really good roads, uh, very good infrastructures, uh, and very good uh, sealed roads. And uh, so we'll take days to go around the east coast and then go up to the north and then you go down to the west coast and you cross again the chain because it's divided by a, a big chain of mountain. It's quite hilly in New Caledonia. And you go down to uh, Numia, which is 45 an hour drive uh, from uh, La Tontuta airport. Uh, and then you can discover as um, uh, Richard uh, uh, said in, uh, uh, in the video, you have the Great South, which takes uh, probably an hour and a half drive to go to the top and uh, south of New Caledonia. But you can choose also to discover the beautiful islands of New Caledonia. And we have the Loyalty Islands with Via, Lifu and Mare, and also the iconic uh, and beautiful Isle of Pines. And you can uh, uh, fly uh, with a domestic uh, company, Air Caledoni, uh, from the domestic airport, which is based in the city of Numia, and uh, will take 25 minutes by, um, by flight to go to Isle of Pines. Or you can take the ferry. We do have the ferry as well to go to uh, Isle of Pines, and will take roughly uh, two hours sailing to go to uh, Isle of Pines. So um, yeah, the main thing here, it's a big island, but it's easy to drive. Uh, to, yep. If I may, Sally, something that's important, I think, to let people know that are going to be cruising here is it, one of the challenges with coming to have visitors, um, you might be down in the Isle of Pines and having a lovely time and, and um, all of a sudden you realise oh, our friends are going to be here in, in four days' time. We need to go back to Numea. We've got to sail all the way back to Numea. We don't really need to go for any other reason other than to collect them. You can quite easily have them come to you and enjoy join you down here. And instead of you having to sail back with them potentially upwind because we've got predominantly east, south, east, southerly trades, they can actually fly or catch the fast ferry down and join you in Isle of Pines and you could sail them back with the brim and have a much more pleasant experience and drop into all these places along the way and have a downwind sail with your guests. You could even find yourself in Lifu or Ovea or Marie and have your guests fly over and enjoy, join you there and be able to take them cruising the Loyalty Islands and then you could have them join you as we have done, had them join us in Lifu 
and we've spent time cruising Lifu and then sailed over to Avaya and had them fly out of Avaya and come back. So there's, there's a lot of really cool options here when you've got visitors coming in regard to traveling as well. Sorry, Sally. No, that's perfect. Absolutely fine. Um, so before uh, going through uh, the different regions of New Caledonia, I just wanted to uh, highlight uh, the biodiversity. Yes, exactly. Uh, just to talk about uh, how rich New Caledonia is uh, in terms of endemic species, uh, flora and fauna, thousands of endemic plants and, and uh, fauna as well. And we do have this um, emblematic Kagu. Actually, it's uh, the equivalent of the kiwi bird here in New Zealand. It's a non-flying bird. Uh, it's there, it's like a big pigeon. And it's a non-flying bird because uh, it lost uh, its ability to fly because in New Caledonia there's no predators. And um, so it's a good transition to tell you that there are no uh, dangerous animals in New Cal, um, no big spiders or uh, reptiles or all those sort of things. We do have the mosquitoes, but I'm afraid um, they are everywhere. So on the next, the next slide, biodiversity Diversity means as well um, something special thanks to uh, the soil. Indeed, in New, Cal New Caledonia is a rich country thanks to the mining industry, uh, one of the biggest producer of nickel. So the nickel is everywhere, and you will see throughout the country, uh, through uh, at the top of the mountain, some scratches. It's all about uh, mining sites, and because of this mining, uh, this um, this, this um, uh, nickel, uh, we do have a, right, a big diversity of um, landscape as well. Anything from the humid forest, the evergreen, uh, to uh, the dry bush and the savanna. So very different options there uh, on the landscape. Uh, so this is it. Have it all in one trip. Uh, one day trip, different world, uh, whether you want uh, to experience the Frenchiness of it. Uh, so obviously no need to go uh, uh, to do 24 hours on a plane to go to France or to Paris. We have the French Riviera just uh, right there. Best beaches on, the, uh, uh, on earth, riding a horse like a cowboy meets the Kanak, and it was so nice uh, described in the, in the video. Uh, the gesture is very important. Yes, you can meet with the local. It's doable in New Caledonia. But if you want to be active, uh, there's a lot of uh, adventure and sports and activities to do in New Caledonia as well. Uh, so a quick word about uh, the accommodation, the range of accommodation. Actually, there's a little bit for everyone in New Cal, from low budget to high budget, you, whether you want to, st to stay in a, in a camping or a, in a youth hotel, to wonderful and very luxury uh, hotels, five-star hotel and four-star hotels, including service apartment if you want to have your own uh, kitchen and do your stuff. But there's plenty of different options there too. Uh, but I always say, uh, if you want to meet with a local, it's always good to have a, a bed and breakfast uh, like a gite or lodges, uh, or you can stay in a tribe with the Canucks. So uh, different options, but there's um, you know a budget for everyone here. Especially important when, although we're bringing our homes with us, the majority of us, we're going to perhaps want to go for a road trip and get off the boat um, and spend a few days touring and to know that the variety of accommodation is there and it's affordable and of course when we have our friends flying out um, sometimes they might want to stay on and, and enjoy some some luxury accommodations as well so good to know that so Yes, and uh, as I said, I'm not going to uh, focus on uh, the water activities, uh, but the land-based activities are pretty much uh, must do in New Caledonia. Anything from hiking, zip lining, mountain biking, golfing. Um, actually, we have four golf courses in New Cal, and one of them is called uh, is based at the Sheraton Diva. It's uh, the Sheraton is a five-star resort, and we have one of the best golf courses. 
in uh, the South Pacific, 18 hole international level designed by Pete Dye. Uh, so it's a design golf and I'm pretty sure Australian New Zealanders would love uh, to experience that, that golf course. So lots of online activities to do. Cultural, of course, um, we uh, covered it during the, uh, the videos, but yes, uh, ladies, if you want to go shopping, uh, there's all the French brands uh, and not always the big expensive ones, uh, but we do have the art galleries Again, authenticity and tradition with the Kanak. Uh, nightlife uh, will go a little bit um, further. Um, I'll describe that better uh, when we'll talk about Numia. Gastronomy, we are French. It's all about your uh, cheese, your croissant, your baguette, your glass of wine, watching the sunset. Uh, so the terroir and the gastronomy is uh, um, one of the top reasons to go to New York, of course. And if you want to learn more about our beautiful but very difficult language, uh, we do have the French lessons for you as well. So lots of culture in Newcal indeed. So this is it. Uh, my big uh, stick, my big uh, French baguette, divided in five big regions. Starting from the bottom, we have Numia, which is the capital, uh, in bluish green. And then you have the west coast in brown, and you have the east coast, which is uh, uh, in a green color. You have the islands, uh, again, Uvea, um, Mari, and Lifu are part of the loyal islands and at the bottom uh, uh yes in here isle of pines il de pain iconic and to finish in, finishing with we have the great south which is in orange here so we'll go through all the regions just to showcase uh what to do there and uh the, the top experiences to to do uh in each region starting with the capital numia uh, Numia is, um, well, just to give you an idea, it's roughly 260,000 inhabitants in New Caledonia, so it's not very populated, uh, and half of the inhabitants are based in uh, Numia, in the south and in Numia. And also, there's plenty of different options. Uh, obviously, Lansbata Bay and Lemon Bays are the very popular location for locals, but also for tourists, because they are all the bars and the night activities, hundreds of restaurants. Uh, it's very busy, actually, uh, in Lansbata Bay and Lemon Bay. Kite surfers, uh, we saw that in, uh, in, uh, in the video. Um, there's always a little breeze in New Caledonia, so it's a heaven uh, for a uh, wind surfers and kite surfers. And we uh, actually in the video, um, we show, uh, we saw the Jibau Center, the cultural center, which is amazing. Uh, the architecture, it was designed by Renzo Piano, uh, Italian architect who did some building in, in Australia, who did the Pompidou Center in Paris. So just the, um, the, the, the architecture itself is a wow factor. So it's really a must do when you're staying in Numia. Um, but there's quite a lot of things to do with the kids, uh, to go to the uh, forest park or to go to the aquarium, uh, go to the market uh, with all the fish and uh, the uh, tropical food. And of course, uh, it was well described going to the Amity Lighthouse or going to Duck Island for a glass of wine or a beer. So there's plenty of things to do in Numia. You can easily spend a week without being bored. That's for sure and certain. Is a yeah. little tight, actually. Yeah, but I think to get the spirit, go to the um, to the um, video. Yes, you. Uh, I've had quite a people, few people complain that they put on a lot of pounds. <laughs> yeah, well, that's so that's so good. When you're on the holiday, you're not on a diet. Come on. <laughs> that's a very good presentation. Um, just uh, wanted to chime in for a moment, folks, to give you an update. Um, we have been going for an hour, um, but as always, very informative. Uh, and we've still got 
a, a very good number of uh, people tuned in and watching. So uh, there's been a few questions, so we do need to set aside a little bit of time at the end for some Q and A. But uh, I just want to give you an update and uh, say that it's going very well. Uh, but production's very good, and, and uh, I'll let you keep going. Thank you, um, I, I, Greg. I guess something that's a burning question that we we haven't addressed yet, and and we may want to, is uh, when will we be able to go? Is that a question we're getting asked? You still there, Greg? Uh, yeah, sorry, mate. It it, um, it hasn't been, but I think. I don't know. I think we're all in tune at the moment and realising that we can't do these things at the moment, but, but that doesn't mean we can't in the future. And I also think for all of us who've been uh, a little bit entrapped as we are, it's just nice to see what we can do when it all opens up again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And look, we're, we're all very hopeful. Sally, um, as well, we're all very hopeful that um, you know, 2022 will see us all being able to uh, move around freely and 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 Go and experience. Yeah. Yeah, I, can, I, I can give you a quick update on the situation if you want to. Um, yes. at, at the present time, indeed, the borders are closed, uh, like it is in Australia or in New Zealand. People who fly to New Caledonia have to has, uh, isolate themselves uh, in an MIQ for two weeks. Uh, but uh, thanks to the government, uh, the um, vaccine uh, rollout is going really well. A uh, lot of people have been already vaccinated, which is good. And I know the government is working really hard uh, to be part of the next bubble. Uh, so we don't have any time uh, like now at the present time, but uh, I know it's on the way and uh, pushing very, very strong uh, for that reopening very soon, hopefully. Yeah, and look, and what I was going to say there is, whether it be New Caledonia, we've got through our company, we've got uh, strong relationships with people in Fiji, French Polynesia, the Cook Islands. And, and I, I know that one thing that will happen is when we're allowed to go again, I think uh, there'll be people from Australia and New Zealand and all around who'll be going back very quickly, even just from the sake of just knowing that these communities need that support once it opens up again. Yeah, well, the, um, um, the situation at the present time with the COVID is under control and uh, people are enjoying life. They are back to level one and need something for Kiwis. So uh, they gather together, they uh, don't wear a mask. Uh, so everything is open now. They are very, very lucky to enjoy that and they want to keep it safe. So there's a protocol and, uh, uh, and process, you know, to go through New Caledonia as soon as uh, we will uh, reopen. So um, yeah, to keep it safe and to welcome New Zealanders and Australians um, very soon again. And if we've got anyone viewing from perhaps French Polynesia or Fiji um, that are currently considering their options for later in the year to move west or south um, to Australia or New Zealand, should those avenues become available, we have had vessels arrive in Australia um, that have had the need to stop in New Caledonia for temporary repairs and, and or reprovisioning and fueling, and that is possible on the proviso that you get prior approval. So it, we have been recommending to people that have been in touch with us about this, that they make application before they leave Tahiti or Hawaii or wherever it might be, and those are actual examples that I'm giving, um, to get permission to stop in New Caledonia if the need arises. Um, so that you know, that they're aware that you're, you're out there and that you're doing it and there may be the possibility that that could happen. It's no good in the last 24 hours all of a sudden deciding, oh, we need to go to New Caledonia, we haven't told anyone and we can't communicate with anyone and arriving there unannounced. So to their credit, they have been very accommodating in genuine situations of need and uh, the, the, the agents there, um, which we can put you in contact with if you let us know, uh, very happy to oblige and help you make prior arrangements if you do need to stop there in a case of um, force majeure. Um, and John, do you do you know if the authorities take into account the time that you've been at sea and uh, bring that into consideration in the length of time you have to quarantine? No, not at all. The, the, the country isn't open to visitors, so therefore the, the, you, you, the time at sea uh, isn't even a, a equation. There's no way to get an exemption to, to visit New Caledonia. Um, what I'm referring to is a force majeure situation where yes. 
you need to just refuel or reprovision and they will make arrangements for you to take a, an anchorage somewhere that they consider to be safe and um, uh, quarantined whilst those essential services are provided and you'll have to move on. So you won't be allowed to just hang out there for a month. For however long it takes to address your needs, you'll be allowed to, to do that in a, in a managed and quarantined manner. Okay, thank you. We can move on, I think. All right, Sally, um, so Isle of Pines. Yeah, Isle of Pines and the Loyalty Islands and the, the Beast Lagoon, because as a sailor, I think that's a must do. But I think we are going to play a video, I think, yes, or uh, yeah. yeah. So Sally's going to talk to us a little bit more about them, just like we've done the highlights and the bits and pieces, but those that have been hanging out for it, we thought we'd uh, bring in now Richard's 10 day cruising plan to the Isle of Pines. And um, again, in a very similar format, a virtual cruise as per the last one. So we hope you enjoy. Let me show you a 10 day cruise plan from Numea through New Caledonia's Great South Lagoon to the Isle of Pines and back again. Five days of sailing and five days of exploration. The first day is from Numea to Ilomato, 24 nautical miles upwind. The trade winds pick up after nine o'clock, so it's best to leave at dawn to arrive just before lunch. Enter Ilomato's small lagoon through a five meter deep channel on the south side of the island. Shallow reefs protect the anchorage from winds from any direction. But if winds over 20 knots are expected from the south or southwest, be sure the anchor is well dug in. The bottom is sand with good holding in depths of five to 10 meters. You need to be very careful not to drop the hook where your anchor or chain will damage the corals. You're going to love Ilomato. Enjoy the beautiful beach down at the southern end of the island. Fabulous soft white sand beaches or the beach at the north end of the island. You can take a walk up to the top of the hill and get a panoramic view of the anchorage. Snorkeling in the calm, clear lagoon water is fantastic. This gigantic coral head, thousands of years old, is on the north side of the big coral shoal in the center of the anchorage. Ilomato's fringing reefs have an amazing variety of colorful fish and corals in water depths of less than a meter. Here is an example of why you need to be extremely careful not to drop your anchor or anchor chain on the dark coral reef patches scattered about the inner lagoon. You do not want to destroy these delicate corals. But don't worry, there's plenty of room to anchor clear of the coral patches. Spend the day exploring the coral reefs surrounding the anchorage and getting to know some of the more interesting lagoon inhabitants. The next morning, exit through the Southeast Pass and sail 10 nautical miles to Ila Iua. Anchor anywhere along the Northwest coast of Ila Iua in five to 10 meters of water. The bottom is white sand with scattered coral patches. Be careful not to drop your anchor on the coral or let your anchor chain drag over them. Ila Iua's brilliant white soft beach is unforgettably beautiful. And if you're there during the week and not on a holiday, you'll probably have it all to yourself with the exception of the seabirds. You as fringing coral reefs are a sheer joy to snorkel over. The water, just the right temperature and crystal clear. This is the reef on the Northwest end of the island. And here is the reef on the Southwest end of the island. In the afternoon, up anchor and sail through the Southwest Pass five nautical miles to Ilat Koari to spend the night. You can find shelter from winds from any direction at Koari, but only by changing anchorages. This is the anchorage for typical Southeast to Southwest trade winds. Six to seven meters of white sand, excellent holding, 
four meters of water right up to the fringing reef. This is the anchorage for west or southwest winds, seven to nine meters of water, white sand. And this is the anchorage for northeast to southeast winds. You can anchor anywhere along the west coast of Kauai in four to nine meters of water. As always, avoid anchoring in the dark patches because they are fragile corals. The easiest access to the beach is on the southwest end of the island. Ilat Kauai, like many other islets in New Caledonia's lagoon, is a bird sanctuary. If there is a red flag flying on the island, the birds are nesting and you must not go ashore or disturb them with loud noises. As in Yua, snorkeling on the coral reefs around Ilat Kauai is magnificent. Here is a look at the corals on the east side of the reef, just to the north of Kauai, about a five minute dinghy ride from the anchorage. This is the reef on the southeast side of Kauai. Just a glimpse of the fun to be had here. You might want to spend an extra day enjoying the beach and the reefs. In the morning, exit through the South Pass, sail 38 nautical miles to Kuto Anchorage on the Isle of Pines. Anchor anywhere your draft allows outside the turning basin for the ships approaching the main wharf and do not anchor near either of the wharfs. Holding this excellent in white sand, the two meter depth contour runs about a hundred meters off the beach. Isle of Pines is a popular tourism destination and there are lots of fun things to do here. If you're into trekking, follow the trail from Kuto up to the top of Mount Naga. The trail is two kilometers long and starts 1.5 kilometers from the dinghy wharf. It's an uphill climb, but only steep in a couple of places. You'll be rewarded with a panoramic view of the Isle of Pines. Canamera Beach, just a short walk from Kuto Anchorage, was recently voted the most popular beach in Isle of Pines. But I personally think Kuto Beach is even more beautiful and it's right there next to the anchorage. To check out the tourism activities for Isle of Pines, you'll need to open the rocket travel guide to New Caledonia. Click on what to do and then on the Isle of Pines. And then on tours. The most popular tour not to be missed is a sail in Beta Upi on a traditional pirogue. This is an excellent community created tourism activity with many benefits for the people of the villages and the environment. Point to the sites on this page of the Rocket Travel Guide to see the most interesting places to visit. Just north of the Kuto Anchorage, you'll find the massive ruins of a prison colony for 3,000 French exiles, mostly political prisoners, built in the 1880s. Amid the tropical vegetation, you'll find crumbling cell blocks and freestanding buildings, all built from rock by the exiled French prisoners. A few kilometers further on the main road is an impressive water-filled cavern. On the north of the island, explore the cave of Queen Hortense. In the 1800s, the daughter of a local chief hid in the cave during the tribal conflict. She was a popular woman, reportedly the first Melanesian to speak and write in French. She later married the grand chief of the islands and became the queen of Isle of Pines. On the northeast side of the island, you'll find Beta Oro's impressive one kilometer long beach. The Cooney Beach restaurant is perfect for a lunch with a cold brew of French wine. Before continuing down a 1.5 kilometer forest path to a small enclosed seawater lagoon called the Piscine Naturelle, the natural swimming pool. It's surrounded by the towering pine trees that give the Isle of Pines its name. Vau is the biggest village on the Isle of Pines and the government center. It has a village market and artwork 
merging traditional and Christian art. One of the most impressive buildings in Vau is the Our Lady of the Assumption Church. Built in 1860, it is a fine example of South Pacific missionary architecture. You can rent a car, hire a minibus, or even ride your own bicycle to visit these sites. On the seventh day, sail from Kuto, 70 nautical miles downwind to Bay de Prony. The Bay de Prony is a large bay with lots of anchorages and interesting wilderness walks. Sail into the Eastern Bay and tie up to a Katnadua Nature Reserve mooring in Anse Magique. The next morning, follow a forested trail from Anse Magique to Katnadua Lighthouse and the whale watching facility. The lighthouse was first built in 1892 for safe passage through the Havana Canal. It's a four and a half kilometer trek there and back and generally takes about two hours. In the afternoon, it's just a short sail to Elo Casey Nature Reserve. Tie up to one of the park moorings on the west or north side of Elo Casey and enjoy a historically interesting three kilometer trek around the island. The walk begins at the park wharf. It's a well-marked trail with signs describing the historical points of interest. This was the freshwater well, and here is the cemetery. There's a nice beach on the windward side of Casey and the path winds through a forest of ancient cycad trees past another beach to a barren rocky plateau down to the north coast forest back up to an overlook and down to a shaded beach on the northwest coast and then up to another overlook and finally returns to the park wharf the next morning it's just a 20 minute sail to Bay de la Somme. On the way there, you'll pass the famous Prony Needle, a pinnacle of calcite rising from 35 meters to just 1.6 meters. The thermal vent is a nature reserve and one of New Caledonia's must do scuba diving sites. Anchor in 10 to 15 meters of muddy sand on the southwest side of Bay de la Somme tie the dinghy to a floating wharf on the north shore and follow a one kilometer historic trail to Prony Village, the site of a prison colony from 1867 to 1911. The trail is marked and there are signs with historic information along the trail. This is the guard cemetery complete with giant clamshells marking the graves. And after this lookout, you come to the forest where prisoners were buried with no markers on their graves. The prisoners logged the prony forests for the wood needed for buildings in Nomea. This is the ruins of the materials storehouse. And this was the armory where the guards kept their gunpowder. In the afternoon, sail about 30 minutes to the Carinage Anchorage for a quick visit to the hot springs and the Cowrie River Cascades, or check out one of the other three rivers that flow into the Carinage Anchorage. The 10th day is a 36 nautical mile downwind sail back to Nomea with a stop at Elo Bailey Special Reserve for a picnic lunch on the beach before sailing back into Nomea Harbor. To plan the perfect cruise for you and your crew, Order the Rocket Cruising Guide to New Caledonia. The website address is in a link in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching this video. Come to New Caledonia as soon as you can. Wow. Extraordinary, Richard. Uh, very good. So Thank you so much for putting all that together. Um, folks, it's available on um, Richard's YouTube channel. 
um, to watch again at your leisure. Of course, the webinar will also be available to watch again, but Richard's posted these up. What's the YouTube channel, Richard? Um, I, the YouTube, it's, um, I believe it's my name, Richard Cheshire. I think that's right. So if you just do uh, YouTube Richard Cheshire, you should come up to these and a couple of other great videos which Richard's got on his YouTube channel. Um, you can, am I right to say that everything we just saw in those videos was, was exclusively on the rocket guides? So what I'm meaning to say is that someone who purchased the rocket guide, apart from your voiceover, would be able to access every bit of that information at their leisure. Yes, in fact, quite a lot more. That's just yeah. that's just an example of how you could plan a cruise to Isle of Pines and back with, with, with the guide. And uh, of course, you you do it yourself, and you'd figure out how much time you want to spend where, and depending on what your interest is and what the people who are with cruising with you would like to do. So all of those little trails, the little dots we saw on the walking tracks, they're all part of the guide that you're going to be able to interact with and see what there is to see on that walk and and the waterfalls and everything we saw that was on the screen there is embedded in the guide when you buy it to use it. Is that right? Yeah, that's absolutely true. Wow. So yeah, look, if you want to see a demonstration on how to use the guide and, and, and what it looks like you know, before you go and spend your money, jump onto our, again, onto that website of, of ours. There's a guide to the using the guides there and that's where you can get the discount, Richard. Um, I, I'm in awe of you. Thank you so very much. I hope you do stick around for a little while and, and hopefully there might be a couple of questions for you later on, but thank you so much. I've subscribed to your YouTube channel, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Sally, you're back on. So we're, we're, we're back down in the islands and we're going to talk about 10 experiences. Well, it was so well described for the Isle of Pines. I'm not going to focus on that because uh, you said it all, uh, Richard. So, but yeah, having a lobster on the beach in the Isle of Pines is really something that you have to do once in your life. Believe me, it's just phenomenal. And all the about, uh, you know, the islands are, uh, are so wonderful. You know, you can go to Uvea and the quality of the sand is uh, so uh, thin. The quality is so beautiful. It's so wonderful. Uh, and it's pristine. So um, yeah, going to the um, to the nursery, to the shark nursery in Uvea is 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 phenomenal. Together to go to the um, uh, cliff in um, the cliff top, you know, the cliff. Um, uh, and the view uh, in Mari are beautiful too. The vanilla, have you heard about the vanilla uh, in uh, Lifu? It's one of the best, very uh, small quantity. Um, the production is really um, small, but the quality is divine. So uh, yeah, New, uh, New Caledonia and its uh, islands are just phenomenal. So yeah, well done, uh, Richard. So, Thank you very much, Sally. And by the way, um, all, all of that information you just uh, talked about, the tours, the things you can do and see in the, in the Loyalty Islands, that's all on, on the Rocket Guide, exactly how you can get there and what you can do when you're there. Just point that out, guys, I didn't make that clear. So there's two guides. When you buy the Rocket Cruising Guides to New Caledonia, you get the Nautical Guide, which is all of the Anchorage ones, but you will have seen Richard switching backwards and forwards and saying, go to the New Caledonia Visitor's Guide where he showed all the restaurants and then he showed all the tours in, um, in, in the Isle of Pines. You get both of these guides, they're individual, they're totally separate from each other and you get both of those when you purchase the guides. Yes, in fact, uh, the, the, the tourism guide was actually done in coordination with the um, Tourism New Caledonia and it was done as a training facility for a, a training utility for travel agents around the world. And uh, so it basically shows all of the tourism activities throughout New Caledonia. Correct. And Richard updates these guides as often as he sees fit, which is generally a couple of times of the year in my experience. Um, so it's not like the information on them is 100 years old. They're, they're up to date and relevant. Very accurate, yes. Um, just while we're there, I've got a lot of questions for the end, but there was one question. Can I clarify, the guides are either in a book form, as in a hard copy form, or you can get them electronically. Is that correct or incorrect? No, that's incorrect. They are strictly a pro program, um, okay. primarily for, to, for desktop, but it can also work on Windows um, tablets. But basically, it's a, it's a desktop program for Macintosh or Windows. 
Okay, thank you for clarifying. And it is important to understand, guys, that the, the best experience you're going to have with this thing because of the amount of interaction that you are able to have with it is to use it on your desktop machine. So on a laptop um, to get the full functionality from it. Yeah, as a matter of fact, if, if you put all of this information into a book form, first of all, because of, there's, there's thousands of photographs, high, high quality color photographs, if you put all of that and all of the information from the from the that's on the cruising guide into on paper, um, it would literally fill up your boat. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, it's updated, Richard, as I mentioned earlier. And those updates are free, aren't they? Yes. Um, and um, if you, the interesting thing is too that it's unlike a book. And with a book, the, there was a cruising guide here for many years. It, it was the last published uh, version was in the 1990s. But unlike a, a book or a PDF form, you can find things instantly. You can go from literally anywhere in New Caledonia to anywhere else in New Caledonia, including all the way up to the, to the Chesterfield, to the, um, the Intracastro Islands, down, in, down to the um, Isle of Pines. You can go anywhere in two clicks, instantly yeah. find whatever you need to see. And there's a good index as well. Okay, very good. All right, so can we uh, move along? Yes, and I'm going to just make people aware there's a couple of videos here that we'd encourage you to take the time and watch yourselves at your own pace uh, on New Caledonia Tourism's website, which we'll show you where that is later, and their YouTube channel, Isle of Pines, Lifu, there's Ovea, there's videos for Africa there, and they're all very, very informative and uh, emotive. So please do take the time to visit them and have a look at them at your own leisure. Um, we're going to just move on now and give you a bit of an idea of what you can expect to see up in the West Coast. Um, so here's a, a little bit about the West Coast, Sally. Yes, it's a, it's a land of the farmers, a very different from the island, obviously. It's all about the parks, uh, uh, hiking, uh, and actually uh, you can stop in Vaux, which is in the north of the country, and fly over this beautiful herd. And the herd is the um, logo of New Caledonia Tourism, and it's made with the mangrove. And so it's one of the natural, it was gifted by Mother Nature. And uh, you can fly over, and a lot of people got uh, engaged uh, while flying over the herd. So um, it's unique, it's fantastic, it's uh, worth uh, going, the, uh, going up there. So it's really in the north, going on the west coast. Gifted by Mother Nature, I like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. There's no hundreds of gardeners who are, you know, tidying up. <laughs> it's, 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 it's real, really natural. Very nice. Um, again, we've got these videos that are on, um, on New Caledonia Travel's website. So please do, on their YouTube channel, please do have a look at those and engage with those. This is something that we only did for the first time a couple of years back, and we chose to spend a, a considerable amount of time cruising the East Coast. And wow. It is something else. I think you refer to it as the, the is it something about the, the coast of the time forgot, uh, Sally, or? Yeah, yeah, it's so special. It's wild, it's green. Uh, it's green wild because there's a lot of water, there's a lot of mangrove, uh, waterfalls and, and, uh, and cascades. And it's really the location where you can meet and greet with, uh, with a local, with a native, with a Melanesian and do the gesture as you uh, described, uh, stay in a tribe. It's so magical. There's, the atmosphere there is just unique. And I would like to just point out, because I've probably been remiss, those that uh, aren't familiar with New Caledonia, it's really important to know that there's an outer fringing barrier reef running. Um, Richard, I, I don't know if I'm correct in saying it's all the way to the north, but I know for the area that I've travelled from about here south, there's an outer fringing barrier reef. That means when you're cruising here, you're inside the outer barrier reef. So you're essentially in this lagoon that gives you, you know, really good opportunities to, to be able to sail in, in um, calmer seas, but with a nice breeze um, and, and very comfortable sailing. Is that would, right, Richard, would you agree? Oh, absolutely. Um, it's best um, to cruise, uh, if you, there, there's two ways you can do it, go around New Caledonia. Um, and my preferred way is to cr cruise down the coast, cruise up the west coast and then down the east coast because on the east coast, 
uh, sorry, yeah, on the East Coast, you can hop, day hop down. So basically you can go from one anchorage to the next in a morning. And yeah. that, that's really convenient because you can go down, just leave early in the morning when the wind is still low and uh, cruise down, it's upwind, but uh, you can go down, you know, 15, 20 miles and then anchor in another nice anchorage um, and make go all the way down the, the coast that way. And there's some very pretty reefs. And as you say, some excellent cultural experiences. And look, the beauty, again, it sounds like I'm trying to sell Richard's guides and I'm not. I'm trying to encourage people to buy them for their own benefit. Every one of those little day hops he's talking about have got routes. You've not just got an anchorage waypoint here. From every anchorage to every anchorage, Richard's providing you with a route. GPS positions go here, go here, go here, go here. Each one of them's a waypoint. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can travel this area with absolute confidence. Um, the whole of New Caledonia, if you've got those rocket guides with you, because they they are basically a, a street guide to what, what you used to call them, a refidex to, to, to travelling around the country. It's it's just remarkable. We, we typically come in here at Lifu when we come from Fiji, sorry, into Lifu when we come from Fiji, and then we go to Ovea, and then we come across and do exactly what Richard just said in the early hours of the in the early part of the day up until about nine or ten o'clock we make our way south we spend the afternoon and evening in an anchorage we make our way south afternoon and evening make our way south before the trade winds get up each afternoon it's just a gorgeous way to, to see that coast so you could make a, a voyage here from the loyalties go out of the south pass Havana pass over here to Mare up here to Lifu, over to Ovaya, and then come back down and see at least half of that east coast um, it's extraordinary Sorry, Sally, we've hijacked your presentation. <laughs> no, you did it well. I mean, I mean that's very true. Uh, but uh, let's move to um, the next slide, uh, which is, yeah, the Great South. But again, I don't want to spend too much time on that because you did it so well, Richard, by describing how beautiful is uh, the landscape in, in, in the South. Actually, the uh, soil is red, like the Red Center in Australia, like Uluru, and, um, and you can uh, do lots of activities, again, from biking, hiking. Uh, the Blue River Park is fantastic. And you, if you are lucky, you can see this uh, little cargo here and around. Just a little bit of local knowledge tip for you there. You might want to pack a pair of old sneakers, um, walking shoes, that you don't particularly uh, have any uh, uh, sentimental value to because it's probable that they will never be white again. That's very <laughs> true. It sticks a lot. And if you uh, walk on your white decks with um, the Mon, it's probable that you'll have red marks on your white decks for some time. My rock Naranka is still the color of, uh, of that hill. Very uh, true. <laughs> So yes, moving on. Um, okay, look, this is New Caledonia's YouTube channel. Um, all of those videos, as we said, get there. Jump on there and subscribe. There's some really great content there and uh, you'll, you'll be able to just pig out on virtual experiences in New Caledonia. You've also got the New Caledonia travel website where they'll be posting updates about, um, you know, what's happening with COVID and border changes and restrictions, but also information about where you can get travel insurance, um, everything you would yeah. need to know to get to New, New Caledonia and enjoy yourself there. Sally, wonderful. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just a big thank you. Uh, it was fantastic to learn all about uh, sailing in New Caledonia and I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I remain at your disposal if you have some question but yes all the information are on our website www.newcaledonia.travel uh, together with Rocket Guide I think you have it all. <laughs> Very well said thank you Sally. All right guys we're nearing the end but what about coming home? And um, a lot of people say to us okay well you know we joined the rally for instance to go across how do we get home? Look, by the time you've been over there, you've made a lot of friends. Most people don't join our rally to come back. Our rally typically, the Go West one, is for international cruisers that are visiting Australia for the first time. Most of the people that have come with us on the East Rally have got enough confidence now to make this voyage back home um, under their own, own steam. But typically, they'll group up with another four or five boats that have joined the rally and they'll all go across in a little flotilla. Um, not to say we don't want you to join our West Rally, but again, most people, um, you know, choose to do this themselves. There is a wonderful opportunity here if it's available to you, and I must stress, if it's available to you, 
Chesterfield Reef. Um, it is recently been declared a marine reserve and it is an extraordinary destination, but it's out of bounds unless you've been permission, given permission to go there. All of the information about how to get permission when time comes and we're able to start cruising again is on our website here at Chesterfield Reef. Um, and you can go on there and download the forms and things that need to be filled out in order to gain permission to go there. But it's a lovely way to break up the voyage. As you can see, we can go 475 miles here and we're at Chesterfield, another 460 miles and we're in Bundy and we can spend three or four days and really enjoy this in here, also waiting for weather windows and so forth. Um, a really, really great thing. It's owned by French, it's New Caledonia's uh, province in the Coral Sea. So um, yeah, please be aware that you must get permission to go there and they'll know you're there, they fly over, uh, they record your vessel, what they would do to you if they found you there without permission, I couldn't tell you, but uh, I know that it wouldn't be pretty. They're very, very protective of it. Um, jump onto YouTube again, um, sailing, no regrets, uh, or again onto our website with the Chesterfield, this video is embedded there, I won't run it now, but it'll give you an experience of one of our rally boats that had a drone and spent some time there at, uh, at Chesterfield Reef. But look, this isn't a place where you're gonna go and have a bonfire on the beach at night. It isn't a place where you know, you're there to, to uh, be a visitor and to leave nothing but footprints and take nothing but memories. We don't want to be having bonfires on the beach and smoking the birds out. A lot of these birds will have never seen a human being before. Uh, it is an extraordinary, extraordinary place to visit. Anything to add on that, Richard? I know you've frequented there. No, that you're, you're absolutely right. They have to have permission first. And, it's, uh, and they have to be very careful not to uh, break any of the, the, the rules and regulations dealing with these protected waters. There are some parts of, of Chesterfield where yachts are not allowed to go and there's some places where they are allowed to go. So they have to first check online to see where they can go and get permission to go there. And those maps you see here, these are all on our website. You can download all of this stuff free from the Down Under Alley website, which is the maps which is talking about where you can and can't go. Alrighty, so before you go, a silly question to ask, but do you know what you don't know? And most of us don't know what we don't know until we realize we didn't know. <laughs> That's a mouthful, but uh, if you give it some thought, you'll probably realize it's true. We have been running these offshore cruising preparation courses. We've taken them online as a result of COVID. It was a year ago, pretty much this month that we've launched these online and we've had over 120 people take this course in that 12 month period, um, the online one. And the feedback we have has just been extraordinary. The testimonials are on our website. Have a look at it, do yourself a favor. I promise you, and if, you, if it's not true, you tell me and I'll give you your money back. I promise you that if you don't save at least twice what you've spent to do this course as a result of the things that we share with you, the knowledge we share in this course, if you don't save at least the, twice the cost of what it cost you to take the course, I'll give the money back to you. I really do want to encourage you to do it. Um, I have gained a lot of confidence in it as a result of the feedback I've got from people that have done it. So yeah, have a look at that, give it a go. Of course, we'd love for you to come with us and we will be resuming the Go East Rally just as soon as we possibly can, which hopefully will be in 2022. There's a lot of reasons to do it with us. Um, you get VIP clearances into the country. You can see the fleet of yachts there anchored outside of Illot Met, which is the um, down at 2019 Down Under Rally Go East fleet. We clear in there. We pay for the officials to come over. You'll see on the back of this boat is the biosecurity people coming on board the boat. The minute you arrive in New Caledonia, your adventure starts and you're swimming off the back of your boat. You don't have to go into New Mia. You don't have to wander around the town. You can just pull up, have a beer, have a barbecue on the back of the boat and we bring everyone to you. Then when it's all done, we're into the resort where we've got a free week's use of all of the resort facilities as rally participants, the pools, everything there. We have uh, some, some uh, uh, information sessions that Richard comes along to and shares his knowledge with us. We have some cultural experiences. We have some barbecues and parties and we have a pretty much a fat time for a week or so after we arrive and then uh, off we go. So it's, uh, yeah, look, please do come with us, make some memories with us and um, I'm sure you'll enjoy the experience. Again, our YouTube channel, we've got videos here of past participants who've done our rallies. These are our own videos, um, families and, and so forth. If you still want to know more about going to New Caledonia, including making the voyage, jump onto our YouTube channel, have a look. 
Uh, we've got a numerous amount of Facebook pages and groups that we run and we encourage you to join those groups and start asking questions of people who are members of the groups that you're, that you're very welcome to do that. Uh, and finally, our rally partners. We were not sure that we would have the Down Under Rally this year after last year. Um, the only thing that saved us is the support of our rally partners, in particular Multi-Health Solutions and the Yacht Sales Company and those that appear on the screen, our premium partners. They make it possible for us to do what we do and we would appreciate it greatly if you'd visit our website and have a look at all of our rally partners offers. Uh, you'll find that you'll get good treatment when you mention the Down Under Rally to all of those people. They make it possible for us to do what we do. That's it from me, apart from answering any questions. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to Sally. Thank you to Richard um, for your working with me over the last few weeks to put this together. Rachel, as always, fantastic. And Greg, lovely, lovely, lovely. Oh, no worries. So are you ready for some questions? Uh, yeah, that won't take long to pick my brain. <laughs> okay. First of all, can you tell me, has anyone done the rally on a Sea Wind 1000? Uh, I don't think so. Not on a 1,000. We've had a 12, 1,200, I think. Okay, understood. Um, very good. Uh, ah, any, I think we asked this last time. Has anyone uh, joined in with a power vessel, not just a sailing vessel? Yeah, absolutely. We, we, yep. we, uh, I'm a fair weather sailor, so I, I, I'm, not, I'm choosing to sail when it's, uh, it's benign. <laughs> by and large, which suits the power boat, um, our, our weather windows, we choose them to be to be very benign if we possibly can. Just going back to your sea wind question, that doesn't mean that that boat wouldn't be capable of making that voyage either. Um, no. The minimum, the minimum requirement is, is nine metres of length overall and certain equipment requirements that's all in our rally terms and conditions of entry. But uh, if the uh, skipper was confident enough um, and the boat was properly equipped, I'm sure they would be able to to quite happily make that voyage. And so in terms of mono holes, you were saying that the smallest mono hole that could participate, you do have a, a minimum length limit of 9.5. Is that what you just said? Uh, nine metres LOA. Nine metres, yeah, that, okay. So what about 28 foot? Uh, yeah, circa yeah. almost, just under 30 actually. I think that's Yeah, 30 foot, foot. okay, that's cool. Uh, uh, how many um, slipways are there over there in Umea? Just out of interest, uh, Richard. Uh, there's four four slipways, but um, the primary one is at uh, Neuville Plaisance. Uh, there's also some smaller ones in Beta Numbo, but the uh, the one most people use is Neuville Plaisance. And is that capable of lifting uh, multi holes as well as mono holes? Mm. No. Well, there's there's two two slipways that can haul a. Uh, a catamaran, depending on a the size, there's a, a marine railway that can take up to you know large ships as well, and yes. they can haul just virtually any kind of um, catamaran. And then there's another yacht, uh, slipway over in Numbo, Karen Ocean, and that can, that haul uh, that is actually designed for catamarans. Okay, very good. So if you're in uh, New Caledonia on a catamaran and you had to haul out of the water, there is somewhere that that can be done. And yes, absolutely. And confidently, there's a resident charter fleet there of, of catamarans that haul out yes. as often as they need to. So it's no issue for cats. And, and, and it depends on the size of the catamaran. Most, most, catamar most of the reasonable size catamarans can haul out at uh, Nouvelle Plaisance as well. It just depends on, they use a, um, a travel lift. It depends on whether or not the cat can fit into the travel lift. Okay. Now, Richard, there was also a question for you personally. Uh, where, where were you from originally and when did you set sail or when did you leave that location? Oh, what a a <laughs> <laughs> I'm from New York originally and uh, I left that location when I was six months old. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I lived, I've lived a long time. I first moved onto a boat in uh, Miami in 1958, my own boat, and I've lived on yachts ever since then. <laughs> we moved out. We moved out into the Pacific and bought the Moira that we're cruising on now in 1975. Wow, fantastic! So you're not a land lover? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> uh, okay, changing tack completely. Can you fly a drone in New Caledonia? 
Yeah, but there are areas that you cannot fly drones. If you, you cannot fly over Numea itself or over a populated area, there, there are rules that are posted on the internet and you really have to obey those rules. The, um, you're not allowed to fly the drones in the national parks, in the marine parks, because it would, they, th they think that it's going to disturb the, the uh, birds. Yes. So um, you can fly it in, in many areas. You can, if you're outside of the, the park area, you can fly it uh, without any problem. And, the, and people have and do, and, and nobody seems to care. There are some places in Isle of Pines where they don't want you to fly a drone. Um, and uh, it, all, it all depends on, you have to, again, as I say, there is a website and there are regulations that you have to obey to fly a drone here. And that's a really good reason for doing La Cotume. Um, when you go ashore and you do your La Cotume, you ask the chief is in, in, and you know, perhaps have your drone with you, say, can I fly my drone? Or they'll tell you, and it's, it's, it's up to them often. Very good. Um, uh, John, you're probably a question for you because you'd be getting this question asked a lot by the participants in your rally. Um, are most people able to get their yachts insured? Um, <laughs> depends how, how how deep your pockets are these days. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the comment was that it, it seems that uh, they're saying insurance is becoming a, a, a challenge for some yachties. Is it? It's, yeah, just, look, it's out there, isn't it? Financially, it's, it's, it's becoming a challenge, especially if it's your first blue water voyage and your crew aren't an experienced crew. Um, if you're shorthanded, your husband and wife or, or a couple, um, and you've not made a blue water passage before, you're probably going to find that you represent a greater risk to the insurer than they're wanting to take on, or they're going to charge you a, an increased premium because of the additional risk you represent. Um, it is so the way the way to overcome that is to find a friend who's done a lot of sailing and say that person's coming with you. Yeah, look, and <laughs> not a, and and to be honest, Greg, even that's not going to help. My our premium, we 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 pay on a four hundred and fifty thousand dollars sum insured. Um, we pay just under four thousand dollars for our insurance locally, so that's our our two hundred nautical mile Australia range insurance. Our blue water extension, however, is another four thousand okay. dollars. So we pay eight thousand dollars a year, um, and I have a, a, a valley partner who's an insurer. We get a reasonable deal. So it's not cheap. Yeah, but let me let me make a point here, and that is that in New Caledonia, you must have insurance to, to go into a marina or to haul out at the slipway, or be in the uh, harbor, or even be in the Mia Harbor. But that's only liability insurance. So your insurance is a lot less if you're not trying to insure the boat for re the value of, of the hull. Um, liability insurance means that the, they, the insurance company will pay out if you run into the dock uh, or if you run into another boat or if you sink your boat, there has to, part of the insurance has to, to include uh, getting rid of the boat if it's sunk. But, so it's third know, party like, liability insurance. Yeah. yeah, all you really need is liability insurance. I mean, we pay 400 Four hundred dollars a year for our, our yacht, and I guess okay. it's about your level of risk. Um, you know what you're prepared to accept. Um, yeah. If I lost my four hundred fifty thousand dollar boat, I would be in all sorts of trouble. So I can't accept the level of risk that would see me not having it or not having the money to replace it. I think insurance. It would be a fairly dry and boring webinar, but it almost deserves its own webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, someone asked about chartering options, and we did answer that. I think the major charter operator in New Mir now is Green Dock Charters. Correct, Richard? That's absolutely correct. Yep. 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 So if you want to find out about charter, just have a chat to Green Yachts. Uh, and how dependable are the moorings? That's a good question. Over here, Richard. <laughs> uh, okay. The moorings are, are dependable but you're not supposed to be tied up to them if you're over 10 meters long and the wind is over 20 knots. Yes. So uh, there are areas you can anchor, but um, it, it always pays no matter, whenever you try and pick up a mooring, first of all, in New Caledonia, people do not pick up private moorings. So if you come into Numia Harbor, 
and there's more, there's a mooring sitting there. That's somebody's mooring. They might be out for a week or they might be out for a day. They'll be coming back again. But just as a matter of policy, you know, just politeness, people do not pick up strange moorings. The other reason not to pick up a strange mooring is because unlike Australia, <laughs> you have no idea what's going to be down there. And many of the moorings in the harbors of, of uh, New Caledonia, of, of, of Noumea, have not been properly serviced. And uh, I think that during the last little blow we had, uh, I think we got some winds 40. up to about, um, about 60 knots during a small cyclone that came by. And uh, they lost 42 boats. Hmm. And many of those because the moorings broke. So you don't want to pick up a mooring because you not have no idea what's going to be down there. Now the park point. moorings, the park moorings are, are serviced annually and they have a good a good team of people that go out there and inspect them and take care of them but even those if i t tie up to a park mooring i'm fairly fairly reasonably sure it's going to be okay for a while um especially if it's not too rough and the winds aren't over 20 knots but yeah you know if it, if it is going to be blowing hard or from a direction where you're going to have a little bit of chop i dive down and check the mooring yep very good and then the next question is are the park fees for the 10 day cruise, or uh, are there park fees associated with that 10 day cruise you discussed? No, uh, not at all. No, no. fees? No, no, there's no fees. The only the only places where there's park fees are is at the uh, the Parc de la Riviere Blue, where I believe you just have to pay to, to drive there. I think if you walk there, you would- but, yeah, You don't pay if you drive through. I mean, if you walk through. If you, if you walk yeah. through, if you park your car outside and just walked in, you don't, you don't pay, but if you if you're going to drive into into the park, you have to pay a fee to, for the park entry, which is like four four hundred francs. That's like five dollars. It's two hundred. So the next the next question I might uh, throw to Sally, um, it's from Roy, who's actually in Tonga. He says my internet is spotty here in Tonga, uh, so I may have missed it. But our carver ceremony is part of the cruiser experience in New Caledonia. And if so, can you talk about the range from tourist shows to local villages? Oh, oh, sorry, my internet is not working well either. I didn't hear the question. Can you hear that, John? Yeah. So carver is a uh, is a uh, um, uh, is a is a something that's used carver, in Caledonia, yeah. um, but it's not to, to, it's not like. Uh, Fiji or Vanuatu in regard no. to being part of a ceremony. No, um, it's, no it's, a, it's a recreational um, um, choice. Consumption. Yeah, there are carver bars in Yumea and those places that people frequent, but no, it's not. It's not a uh, part of a ceremony as such. Correct. And um, the entertainment that's available there uh, will range anything from, um, yeah. Uh, Wachecha, which you would have seen on our video of the, the like the guys in their traditional dress singing and uh, on some of Sally's videos, from that and to uh, some of the nicest entertainment we've had is when we've been invited into the Kanak villages and their homes and uh, they don't have televisions and generators and things and they're sitting around by a fire playing a guitar and singing along and, and everyone's there enjoying that uh, experience with them. So, um, you know, there's in the islands there's um, there's anything from organized entertainment to impromptu entertainment and in Yumea there's every sort of entertainment you could possibly want okay yeah, let, me, let me let me uh, let me uh, contribute to that as well because um, throughout the islands and the, and the local communities they have festivals and the festivals are advertised on the New Caledonia travel website so if you go there during a the festival you're going to have some really really seriously good entertainment from the from the from the local people uh, with dancing and, and uh, different kinds of foods and bunyas. And, and so timing your, your visit to these areas to a festival is well worth doing. Even yeah. if you were, happen to be in Noumea, you could fly to, you fly to one of the loyalty islands and attend the festival and then fly back again. Yeah, I agree. We seem, to have, sorry, we seem to have enough people here to, to keep answering these, extrapolating on that a bit. It's really important to understand we've run rallies in Dalifu where I've got 40 boats sitting down in the anchorage that's all been planned and everyone knew it was coming only to arrive ashore and find out there had been a death in that family in that village um, uh, in the days preceding our arrival and nothing, nothing is going to take precedence over the period of mourning. Nothing got done. 
we had none of our things that we had arranged to have done. There was no remorse about it. It was, they are very much living their own traditional values and their traditional way of life. So you might think that you're going to see something and it's going to be all happening only to get there and find out that the place is just not happening. Which is totally acceptable and understandable. Well, and but you've got to, a lot of people don't get it. We've got to adjust our expectations and just feel fortunate to experience what we experience when we experience it because we're in their country as visitors. Yep. And then uh, changing tack again, are Navionics charts of the area reliable? <laughs> what do you want, to, want to go, Richard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they certainly are. Um, in fact, New, uh, New, New Caledonia's nautical charts. Uh, which are done by the French survey vessels, um, are very, very good for ships, but <laughs> not necessarily for small yachts. And in the remote areas, the, the, the charts for remote anchorages that a small yacht is going to want to anchor in are not all that good. That's why we do all our own hydrographic surveys. Uh, we go into the anchorage, we take our dinghy and go around and check out all of the different ice uh, um, depth yep. lines, and look for dangers that a yacht could get into, check out the bottom types and so on. But they don't, the French don't, haven't done that for the charts. Most of the charts that are on the nautical charts oh, have, are actually old, they were done by the US military when the US military was here during World War II. And as a good charts, the, man, the Navy does excellent charts, but not for yachts. They're made for ships. So yes, they're very accurate, except when you get into the nitty gritty of trying to drop your hook into a particular little lagoon somewhere in four to five meters of water. Okay, I'll keep moving. There's still a few questions, folks. So, we'll, um, you know, you talked about the two meter pieces of material that you hand over as part of the, uh, um, as part of- um, in Coutume. Each of, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, how many would you normally take with you John or, or Richard, how many would you stack on board of those two meter? We buy, a, we, in Yumea, before we leave, we buy a, a um, I think it's about 40 Australian dollars, a, uh, a package that is one long length of material. I just can't remember its total size, but we then cut that down to the two meter lengths. Um, so we can choose the sizes we give and, and, and how often we give it, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, we don't typically buy 10 two meter packs. We'll buy one large pack and we'll be more generous or less generous with it as we see fit. <laughs> I'd like to contribute there as well. When we've done Kutum many times, we'll go in and, and give them the cloth and give the, you know, the, do the traditional thing. And then uh, they'll all say, thank you very much. And then they'll turn around and they'll hand us package with exactly the same thing in it that somebody had given them before. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as an exchange. So it's, it's really an exchange of, of respect. It's you know, a gesture. Here, I, I, it's a gesture. That's exactly yeah. right. Here, I respect you. I'm pleased to be here and I'd like to be your guest. It's just, just like if you go to a party, you, you knock on the door of your, your host's house and they open the door and you've got something with you that you give to them, a cake yeah. or cookies or whatever. And um, they, they you go in there and then they are going to give you something back. Now, Very one good. thing you do not want to do with the kutum is give alcohol. You don't give booze in these situations. You give nice things. Sometimes you might want to give something useful, like a bag of a big bag of rice um, or some canned corned beef. They love that for some reason. And um, you know, there are there are things you can give. But basically, here it's just a, the traditional uh, way of saying. I respect you and your property and your ownership of this area, and I'd like to come visit you. So here's here's the traditional piece of cloth, thousand francs. And as I say, though, a lot of times they're going to give it right back to you. So you can give it to somebody else. And, and when, when you, you go, go when you go ashore, Richard, do you do they know what to do? So they know that they need to quickly go and find the head, the, the chief of the village or whatever to, to take you it, to. It all, it all the, like like uh, John pointed out, it all depends on where you go, where you're going ashore. Um, and uh, if there's something else that, you know, the chief might not be there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you might go in there and say, where's the, you know, ask the nearest person, where's the chief's house? And we'd like to do Kutum. And they might say, well, he's, o he's over in, in way right now. He'll be back tomorrow the next day or whenever and uh, he'll see you then okay good 
All right, I'll keep moving along. Um, this is a good question. Um, in some of the Pacific countries, there is news reports in our media where of you know increasing tensions between say the locals and and people like ourselves visiting yachts people um is there a, a, an, an increase in tension between the locals and the and the, the great foreigners great. yeah great let me talk about that because yeah. i want to tell you right now that there's increasing tension between locals and foreigners everywhere on this planet Yes. Um, there's even tension because of COVID-19, when people have been locked up, there's tension between husbands and wives and kids. <laughs> this is just, this is just we're just in a, in a period right now where the whole world is enmeshed in this, in this tension situation. I'm hoping that as this, hopefully, COVID plague dies out or we get, we get enough inoculations, that things will get back to normal again. But right now, the people of the islands in, in um, the Lifu and Mare and, and, and Ovea, and even in the Isle of Pines, uh, they just, they don't want visitors. They don't want visitors yeah. of anybody, any description. In some of the people, when during the lockdowns, people who were from these islands, who were in Nomea, were not able to go back to the islands mm. because they're afraid of the virus. Same thing is happening in Vanuatu. So, totally understandable. Yeah, it's, yeah. You know, yeah, there's tensions and there's a lot of tension everywhere in the world right now. So uh, that's not, a, not, not something you can talk about right now. Let me say this, before all of this, no, it was no problem. There were some places in Vanuatu and also in New Caledonia where you always had difficulties between the local, you didn't always have, but you had low difficulties between the local people. Like in Isla Pines, you used to be able to anchor anywhere, no problem at all. But the problem is that in some areas, the yachts were not respecting the local people at all. Uh, they'd come there and they'd, they were fishing. These people in the remote villages in, in, New, in Isle of Pines, their fisheries, that's a livelihood. They're going out there to feed, catch a fish for dinner. And if you have a bunch of yachts come in there and they all go jumping in the water with spear guns and shoot all the fish, eh, it's kind of, you know, it's not very nice. Yeah. And uh, the same thing in, in one area in Isle of Pines, people were dumping their garbage over the side and it was washing, <laughs> washing up on the beach uh, in front of people's houses. Um, in another place, the, the yachts were taking, going, having big picnics ashore and then walking off and leaving the crap all over the place. And this, this irritated the villagers, and understandably so, because yeah. the young men would then have to go out there and clean up the island that these guys have messed up and they, you know, that's not their job. So yes, there've been tensions um, and it's, it's, you know, it's just a question of politeness. However, they've worked out systems where you can go into, in out of pines, you go into Kuto, you're allowed to go in there, you can anchor there, no problem at all. And, and if the wind switches, you can go into around Canamera Bay. But in terms of going anywhere else, you, have, you can't right now. Yeah, and look, Coach, good. it just comes back to Coach Hume, I think. If, if you want to find out whether you're welcome, exactly. um, go and do your Coach Hume, and you'll soon get a vibe from where you came to as to whether you are welcome or not. Even if you can't uh, speak French or understand French, you get the vibe. <laughs> and um, this might be a question for you, uh, Richard. You might know of it, or maybe not, but um, someone was asking, because um, I think, the understanding earlier was that there's two things you've got to have. If you fly on an aeroplane to New Caledonia now, you've got to prove that you've got travel insurance. So this is different to your yachts insurance. Correct. Um, do you know, is there medical travel insurance that can be obtained for people, the senior citizens in our society? As in, once you get to an older age, are you still able to get the travel insurance? I think the person here is asked, can you get travel insurance if you're over 75? I think the answer would be yes, wouldn't it? John, I think you'll have to field that one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm, I don't I'm, know either. I think you'd have to talk to your travel insurance company. Yeah. I'd invite you to go to our website into the services directory. There's a sub menu there that says agents and insurance. And in there is a link to um, the travel insurance um, company that you'd certainly be able to find out from. Uh, it's too broad a question for us to be able to answer yep. on behalf of every insurance company. 
And then um, you've you've mentioned again uh, the name of the, the ceremony or the welcome. The, uh, the can you just pronounce that again? I know you struggle with it, John. Kuchum, Kuchum, yeah. Richard, yeah. Kuchum, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's good. It's it's actually it's French name for custom. Okay, no worries. Oh, good. Now listen, I think we've answered all the questions. Um, uh, I'm just wanting to just make sure we haven't missed any on, so I'm just, bear with me, I'm just rolling down the list. Um, uh, I think the insurance, if you want, we've had quite a few questions. Um, yeah, I think we've answered all of those. Where can medical insurance be attained? What's, uh, oh, there was one there, someone said, what an amazing man Richard is. What about you and me, John? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm for that. What about you and me? <laughs> Um, and then I think we've um, opened for, um, and then, so um, that's all good. And so I think someone's asking for the spelling of that word, but it's in the presentation, so they can go back and watch the uh, replay that goes on YouTube, if you had it spelt there. And um, that's all good. So listen, I'm not sure if, um, I'm not sure if Sally's still there or whether she's just got a camera off, but uh, I just think from uh, Multi Hole Solutions and the Yacht Sales Co's perspective, great work, folks. It's been lovely to meet you, Richard. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to do it in person. Um, and uh, John, I'll let you uh, sign off. And Sally, if you're there in the background, thank you very much as well. You, it, the, uh, uh, it's been excellent to have someone of uh, your stature uh, and knowledge of New Caledonia here on today's presentation. Greg, thank you. Rachel, thank you. Um, mercy for coup, Sally. And Richard, get on you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. I'd like to say one thing. There, uh, th that is that, um, number one, this has been a great webinar. I think you've done an excellent job organizing it and pulling it together. And I'd like to point out that of all of the yacht rallies that I'm familiar with, the John's Down Under rally has been absolutely the best rally anywhere in the Pacific, maybe yeah. anywhere in the world. They've done, he's done a wonderful job with it. Fantastic. And listen, I know Freddie's in the background there. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you as well, Freddie. You're welcome. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Freddie. Thank you, Richard. That was lovely of you. I appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again soon, mate. Yeah. Stay safe. Thank you. Yes. And on that note, we'll sign off. Cheers, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a lovely weekend.